What's up, everybody? It's Keefe from Ghost Cult Magazine, ghostcultmag.com, and I'm here with the one and only Mr. Wednesday 13. Hello, Earth people. Hello, Earth. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. This Look, is a good day in New York. Yes. I'm not stressed out. It's been, it's been good. Usually our days in New York are like going to the wrong tunnel or going through a tunnel that's too small and ripping the top of our bus off, which happened a couple of years ago. Um, you know, just the usual horrible things you could think of getting into the city that hasn't happened today. We actually got to park in front. And, uh, so, so far so good. I should knock on some sort of wood here. Knock on some that. wood. Yes. Well, welcome back to New York. We're here at Irving Plaza. Uh, ahead first of, time here. First time first at this time venue. First time ever playing this venue. Yeah. Terrific. This is a legendary venue. Uh, sure. Getting some renovations soon. So uh, there's only a handful of, I think a few months left before it shuts down for a little while, but we're, we're coming back after, but uh, we're here for the big tour cradle of filth wednesday 13 very yeah. exciting times yes uh how's the tour been going for you guys amazing um it's been going too fast actually uh, i just realized we have like two and a half weeks left so it's been like oh man it's like it's we're already past the halfway point but uh it's been great i didn't really know for certain what it was going to be like for us because um you know cradle of filth i definitely knew of their of their band and the and their history and um so i didn't really know if if we would really fit with their audience. Um, but I've, but I've learned that after the first two shows that the cradle of filth audience is really, is really like, uh, they're diverse. You will see people with cradle of filth shirts. You'll see people with ghost shirts, Manson shirts, typo negative shirts or whatever, you know, it's just all across the board. So they really are, they have a diverse audience and that's the same way that our audience is too, uh, when we do our headline shows. So it's a good mix um and we seem to fit in it seems like the cradle audience likes a theatrical performance and cradle cradle does that and and we definitely do that and raven black the same way so it's uh so yeah it's been a it's been really cool i think for for fans to see because you know i used to go to shows all the time and you just you want your support bands to be cool and something that you want to see and you want to go oh man i hope this band doesn't suck so hopefully we haven't been sucking to people and uh the response has been good so either we've been doing really good or you guys are great liars so, I I highly doubt they're great liars. Um, yes, most maybe, people, I don't know, maybe, but never I, underestimate. I, I have followed most of your career, and I would say you have never been the opening band that has sucked. Well, thank almost, you, never, thank you, actually, never. So good stuff, and I I would also say, yeah, I think it's really cool and maybe indicative of this kind of Spotify streaming age where people's tastes they're less elitist mm -hmm. and they're a little more less genre specific, yes. and they will warm up and actually want to see bands that are, you know, first of all, there's no other band like Cradle. There are bands in the same genre as Cradle. Right. Cradle is almost their own enterprise. Yep. And so bands that probably try to sound like them would even be less of a good match for them. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's really great that this kind of diversity and also shout out to Raven Black. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, what a really good bill. And you guys are on tour uh, supporting Condolences still? Yeah, this 2017? is a, Yeah, this is the last little uh, run on that. And uh, the new record's coming out later this year on Nuclear Blast. And uh, we pushed it back a little bit because I uh, wanted to spend a little more time on on everything with the artwork and, and just we have a lot of special guests on the record. And uh, so it's the first time we've ever did a record of this magnitude and put this much thought into it it's my first record i've did sober uh off alcohol and and it's just revived my love for music my love for horror movies it's just been like a it's just been like a re rebirth in my in me over the past the past year and uh i think people are going to see that with this record this is everything i think you could want out of a wednesday record it's as heavy as condolences but it's got you wanted the horror back this is the most horror record i've ever done but not in the campy sense of what i've done in the past this is the new i'm the new boogeyman i'm the next on the block of of murderers next to michael myers and that it's like uh there's a character with this with this uh with this record necrophase there's a there's a monster with it uh so yeah, so I've sort of kind of made a movie record, so to speak. Cinematic feel, maybe. Yes, very much. This you have to listen to the record. It sounds like you're listening to a soundtrack from an old 80s film. Killer. This is really exciting to hear. Um, 
First of all, congratulations on your sobriety. Thank you. It's got to be you. hard touring sober as well as it is creating Actually, sober. Actually, it's, it's a lot easier touring sober than I thought. What was hard was drinking a bottle of Jack Daniels and trying to pretend that you didn't the next day and convincing yourself that you're better with doing that. And I've learned that I, it was just literally just making myself work harder. So now it's, I'm, my brain's clearer on everything. And, uh, I just, I don't know, I've just got a better outlook on things. I'm not, my, my brain is, is unwet now. I had a wet brain there for a while. It wasn't unfunctioning, but it was just, uh, slowly drowning and now it's uh now it's back on top where it needs to be and i feel like i'm at my top of my game so uh awesome man i'm glad to hear it and uh i think i think it's really refreshing that you're very frank about that because we live in a time where as, as i think especially from touring musicians and men even it's hard for us to admit vulnerability and oh, say man, hey, you know is, it's hard to this is a job where this is a job where you're required to be I mean, we're right beside of a bar. There's, you know what I mean? Like, this is the only job where you can actually show up to work drunk and like, oh, well, that's, you're in a band. You know, oh, you're, you're a drug addict. Oh, it's because you're in a band, you know, because that's just, that's just what happens to a lot of us. And a lot of us get sucked into it. And, uh, you know, and some of us hit the wall and, and get up and learn from it. And some of us hit the wall too hard and never get up from it. And uh, so, yeah, it's a live and learn thing. I don't regret anything I've done in the past, it's all got me to where I am today. And, uh, you know, it's just, for me, it's just, that's, that's the old me. That's the old thing. I've did it. And now I can sit back and tell the stories. And, uh, but I did enough drinking for, 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 for many people watching this. I drink, I drink many lifetimes for, for many people. So, so if you never drink, I drink for you. There it is. Yes. There it is. Well, I appreciate that again. Thanks for sharing. Um, can't be easy. Um, I definitely wanted to talk about uh, tonight's show. Yes. Uh, Condolences has had tremendous legs for a couple of years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've had 15 years now as a solo artist. Yes. Uh, so as well as other projects you've been part of. So how do you sort of get ready for an opening stint on a tour and pick the set list? Is it tough at this point or are there things you have to keep in or? Fans um, revolt for, if you for, don't. for this tour, we definitely um, catered to, to uh, you know, I was thinking more of, I always put myself in the audience, you know, and it's like, okay, if I was going to see Cradle of Filth, because I know that this audience is 90% their audience and we have 10% of our fans that'll come in. So it's basically a new audience every night. And I'm going, okay, what would they want to hear of our catalog? And I, we have so many songs, everything from the kind of horror punk songs to what condolences is, which is a much heavier record. So I figured with them being a heavier band, we kind of catered more toward the heavier songs, not all heavy songs, but what I thought would fit, you know? And, uh, so it wasn't that hard to cater a set like that, you know? Um, but it was, you know, I wanted to make sure this tour was, a darker set. It was something I, you know, with the theatrics and stuff I do that would fit and would work well. And I think judging by the audience reaction and it's, it's been, it's been working, you know, so we could have tried something else and it probably would have worked too, but I think this is, we did it well. Keller, can't wait to see it. Uh, I think, I feel like you are one of the uh, last artists to come of age in the pre streaming era or mm -hmm. the pre, almost the pre, uh, internet pre Facebook era. So I wanted to kind of talk to you. It was a, a pleasure to talk to you about other things like this. Do you feel like it's harder now? Would it be harder now if you were starting out now uh, than uh, when you did? Yes and no. You know, it's one of those things where I tell people all the time, they'll, you know, they'll ask me for advice and go, well, how do you get started? And I'm like, well, I could tell you how I got started, but it's totally different now. You know, um, YouTube wasn't around. If you're creative and you've got something original, <laughs> you've got a television right there, YouTube. You've got that outlet. Whereas before, bands didn't have that. It was, they had to go play shows and go to town and this person had to tell this person about it. Now the internet kind of does that for you. So it's, uh, I think it's easier in the fact you could be seen, but it's also easier to get buried because everybody knows they can do that. And everybody's uploading to YouTube and everyone just gets lost in these millions and millions of videos. But I always say, if you're good enough and you are 
different enough. You're going to stand out from the pack, but you've got a perfect platform right there to use it. So, you know, you can embrace technology in that sense, but, uh, but I'm still the old school guy that just, you know, it, it was back in my day, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I've, I've, I've been through all the different changes and, you know, I'm not, a supporter of, of Spotify and downloading music and things like that. I mean, that's the reason why a lot of bands are charged double their concert tickets now and they charge for meet and greets because the money that we used to make off our records, we have to make it another way. It's, I, I hate that I have to do meet and greets and charge fans to do it, but that's how we put fuel in our, in our vehicle to travel. And uh, so it's kind of like you can look at it as, oh, well, everybody gets a chance to listen to your music. And I'm like, well, did they see the album cover? Well, no, they listened to it. Well, how about the year I spent making that album cover and that art that goes along with it? People don't see that. So there's it's there's pros and cons of the whole thing. I prefer when you had to go to a store to get a record. You had to make that effort. And really, is it that hard? You'll make an effort to go get food every day. If you love rock and roll, which I did, I made an effort to go get all my favorite records. People are just lazy now and they say, oh, this is how it is now. That's how it is because you made it that way. You can still go out and get stuff. And I'm all about people with Spotify. I have Spotify, but every record that I listen to on Spotify, I own. I only have it because I can play it on my phone when I'm on tour and I don't have to travel with my stuff. But everything that I love, I went out and bought the vinyl, the CD and everything. So if people would agree to do that, I'd be a lot cooler with it. But it is what it is. And, um, you know, some bands survive it, some bands don't. So we're somehow riding the rocky, the rocky ship in the sea to, to get there. But, uh, it is what it is. Cool. Cool. Uh, on the flip side, you have a reputation of being particularly giving and, uh, you know, welcoming to your fans. What? People. I thought I was much worse than that. But <laughs> no, thank you, thank you. people, I, I've asked people, I've asked fans and, uh, they all to a person, at least from my experience, my informal non-scientific ghost cult poll, uh, <laughs> said that Wednesday 13, you are one of the better people they've interacted with when they do a meet and greet Great. online. You feel very, there's a transparency about you. You're very frank and encouraging to your fan base. Is, is it come naturally to you? Is it something you have to work at? No. And, and working on being yourself would, would be like, this doesn't make sense. Like uh, one of my biggest pet peeves of anything is being a younger fan growing up on music. Cause I was, the guy watching Headbangers Ball every Saturday night, watching every interview. But I still have all that on VHS. I watched it every Saturday. That was my weekend. I didn't go do anything except wait for you know Headbangers Ball. And I watched every band interviewed on that show. And you would see people that would come on there and be honest, but you would you'd smell a mile away the rats that would come out there and go. Oh, well, you know, uh, and they would use the interview voice or, you know, oh, well, before the show, we do this. And I was just like, man, if I ever had the chance to do an interview ever, be your fucking self. Don't put on an interview voice. You know, I I talk the way I talk. This is the way I this is the way I dress every day. I'm not dressed up for this interview. I, you know, it's like uh, I think being honest with your fans is is the best thing you can do, you know? And like, you know, some fans will see pictures of me and they think all day I watch Dracula and sleep in a casket. And, and I wish I could do that, but I, but I don't, I, I don't have enough room on my bus for a casket. And, but I do actually sleep like Dracula. It's a natural thing. I've seen videos. Someone videoed me recently sleeping and I look like Nosferatu. It's so uh, maybe it's just a natural thing, but, uh, but yeah, I think honesty is the one thing I try to keep with my fans and I don't bullshit them about stuff. I tell them the truth on stuff and, you know, sometimes we don't want to hear the truth, but that's what it is, you know? And the truth will set you free people yes. sleep like Dracula. That's go, right. Go back and watch Headbangers Ball on YouTube. I wish you would come back. You know, I, I do too, but it's just, would it be the same? What no. people, what people watch it, you know, right. it's like, it's the people, you know, I'm like this close to just never using my cell phone again. I'm just so, I've disconnected my cable now at home. I only watch movies and things I like. I've just kind of disconnected from the things I don't like to, to, for my own entertainment reasons. But, uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know if it'll ever go back to the way it was and, 
I just hope the future has something good for us and something cool to, you know, and if it doesn't, I'll, I'll make up something fun for me and I'll have fun regardless. So there it is. The playground inside of your mind, everybody yeah. use your imagination, use your imagination. Yes. That's good. Self care. Take, get yourself off social media sometimes. Yeah. Last question. Yes. I, I definitely didn't want to lose this opportunity to talk to you. Uh, in addition to the new record coming mm -hmm. out that we're very excited to hear about. You guys have some major, major tours later in the year. The big Static X tour. Yeah. Um, paying tribute to Wayne Static. It was just the 20th anniversary of Wisconsin Death, Death Trip. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really stoked that you're part of that tour. And I know what a big fan you were of that band. So yeah. I just want to ask you what, us. you know, yeah. friends, peers, colleagues, you came up at the same time as them. What does that mean to you to be part of this tour? Dope, Devil Driver. It's great. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's really weird because that like Static X and was like the first camp of of in next to Slipknot with Joey, you know, that I that I knew. Um, you know, because Trip was was in Static X. He was in, involved with Murder Dolls in the beginning. And, you know, so I remember my first times going out to Hollywood and going to Wayne's house and and riding out to Anaheim to play the house of blues with them. And, uh, actually my last show with my band before murder dolls, Frankenstein drag Queens was playing with static X in Atlanta. Um, so yeah, it's been a, uh, you know, it's hard to imagine it's been that long, but, uh, but yeah, for that record to turn 20 years old and the, the band to put something together, that's cool to pay tribute to him. Um, you know, because that, that band, a lot of people don't realize that like they, I mean, they were a platinum selling band on that first album. That record is fucking cool. It was, it was like, I don't know, super white zombie or super white zombie, super prong. It was like, it definitely had that, that influence. I remember Wayne listening to prong every day before he went on stage and he always held them as the, as the band that they did. Tommy prong pretty much invented that down tune thing. And he's the master of it. He doesn't get enough fucking respect. Um, this guy you know, right here, he knows. you know, so, uh, so yeah. So, um, um, it's cool to be a part of that. Um, the fans seem to be excited. We're doing, you know, UK, Europe, uh, you know, so it's going to be exciting to see. And I don't think Static X really got to tour a lot in those places. So the nostalgia thing of that. And then I keep forgetting someone remind me, he goes, well, you're part of that too with murder dolls. I'm like, Oh, I forgot. Okay. Yeah. So there's fans excited from that as well. So we'll definitely throw in some, uh, some murder doll songs. I know devil drivers doing cold chamber stuff. So for anyone that was around that time, it's going to be like, uh, get your DeLoreans ready to go back in time. And we're going to, we're going to party. So punch it, Marty to yeah, 88. Hit it, Marty. Yeah. We're Wednesday 13. Thank you so much for spending some time with ghost cult. My name is Keefe. We're ghost cult magazine, ghostcultmag.com, And we are Claire. Woo.